Merry Christmas, Heidelberg Union Church. Merry Christmas. Good to see all of you this evening. You may notice something a little bit different. We have screens that have been installed this week. So this is our, our first, well, first Christmas Eve, second uh, worship service that we will be using the screens. So we hope that you will enjoy it and it will enhance your worship experience this evening. Flowered made the snows upon a winter. 
No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here and we are so glad that you are with us to celebrate the birth of the Christ child. Will you please pray with me? A wondrous God of the stars, we come tonight with breathless wonder to see the babe who will change our lives. We hear the names wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, and we are in awe. You have touched the earth this night with your unconditional love. Touch us, touch our hearts and minds and souls. May we never tire of this story. We may never take it for granted. Make this night magical again. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen great light. Celebrate the coming of the light. Tell everyone about God's amazing miracle. Celebrate the coming of a child. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. Celebrate the coming of Christ. Our opening hymn is Angels from the Realms of Glory. If you would please rise, Gray Hymnal 131 or words on your screen. Peace, joy, and love. Four candles, four promises continually offered to us by God. And all of them manifest in this one we light tonight, the Christ candle. In Christ we find the hope of transformation, the peace that follows justice, the joy of self-fulfillment in community, and the love that encompasses us all in our diversity, empowering us to make our own unique contribution to this world. In Christ, we find light and life and the courage to be like him, answering his call and following in his footsteps. We light the Christ candle, for unto us a child is born.
Don't let the light go out. We rejoice in God's steadfast presence in our lives and in God's unique presence in the life of Jesus of Nazareth, born of Mary, growing through childhood into an adult ministry, in all his life manifesting the peace, love, and justice of God, his voice undimmed by the centuries, his call and his promise as clear to us as it was to his disciples so long ago. Come to us, Jesus. Be born to us this night. In our hearts, our minds, our lives, may the life of your life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us, God for us, God in us. Amen. The scripture reading for tonight is the gospel of Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Canerus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David, 
He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place in the guest room. Now in that same region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told to them about this child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all those words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as, had, just as it had been told to them. Will you please pray with me? Awesome God, we pause tonight to remember the story, to remember the transformational power of a child, a baby, your son, Jesus Christ. Open our hearts that we may hear the story as if it were for the first time. May we be touched by and moved by your spirit. Amen. We come to hear the story. It's a wonderful story about love, about God's people, and it's a story that continues to transform us 2,000 years later. It's a story you probably know well. It's a story you've probably heard lots of times before. So why come? to this place, why come again this night to hear the story? I'd like to share a reflection by Stephen J. Maunder with you, as I think it helps us to ponder this question. What brought you here? Some among us might take this question literally, replying perhaps the bus, or a car, or I came on foot, hopefully not tonight, because it's awful cold out there tonight. Others in response may say something like this, this is my church. That's what brought me here, this is my church. But there's something deeper within the question, which we might consider. In the midst of our listening and our singing, we pause for a moment. And in your mind, think about this. What brought you here tonight? Our question might also be posed about those that gathered during the night of Jesus's birth and during the days that followed. What brought Mary and Joseph, the shepherds and the Magi to Bethlehem? A Roman census, angelic appearances, a star in the sky, even Herod's advisors, played their part in assembling the tableau, which is loved by so many nativity plays. 
a mix of events and dreams and interventions that brought them to that place. In so many ways, this is an ordinary story of a birth from a home in place of a home, of a story midst of oppression. But this ordinary story, one of wonder, as we discover the everyday entwined with the divine. And so when they leave that place, the shepherds and the magi, when they leave that place and they head back to their homes by another path, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus into exile, none of them, none is left the way that they were when they arrived. And for those of us who have come here tonight, do we leave the same people? Does the Christmas story stop in this place, packed away and boxed up for yet another year? Decorations that are taken down and packed away. Now, I don't know about you, I'm sure you have a lot of traditions and we're gonna talk a lot about traditions tomorrow morning if you come to worship. But I'd like to share you one of mine with you. Every year when the kids were little, they would go to my parents' house and they would decorate the Christmas tree for my parents. And every year my parents would give them a little bit of money for helping to decorate. But the point of the money was so that they could buy my husband, John and I, a Christmas gift with their own money that they earned doing the decorations at Grammy's house while they played Christmas carols and had hot cocoa and had a great time. And every year from the time that they were probably five and six years old, they would get my husband, John and I pretty much the same thing. Every year for me, it was a snow globe. And every year for my husband, it was a nutcracker. So we have a huge collection in our home of nutcrackers and of snow globes. And of course, every year we need to pack up all those nutcrackers and all those snow globes. And so the year that they got me this particular snow globe, I was packing away all of the Christmas decorations. And I looked at this and it's, you can't see it probably from where you are, but it is the nativity. It's a snow globe of the nativity scene of Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. And I picked this up to pack it away and I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. For some reason, I needed to keep the snow globe out. I wasn't able to pack it away. So it resides on my nightstand where I see it every single day. So I ask you again, friends, do we pack this story away? Do we pack this story away or do we allow the joy of this story, the wonder of this story to transform us, to transform our lives so that we go home? Different people. Do we feel an invitation to somehow take a step beyond who we are right this moment? Are you like the Magi being called to walk home a different path, to go home by another way? How do you want to live your life today, tomorrow, this month, this year and beyond. What brought you here tonight? Did you come by bus or by car? We know you didn't come by foot. Are you here because of tradition or belonging or to inquire? Or maybe you're here for some comfort. Whatever brought us here tonight, we arrived here in God's house, 
at God's invitation to come, come and see. May we leave this place transformed by the light of Christ. May we leave this place full of love and grace, transformed by a baby born this night. Amen. Will you please pray with me? Holy One, on this night, we are so thankful for so many gifts. The gift of Mary saying yes when God asked her to believe, and Joseph saying yes when God asked him to trust. And most importantly, the gift of the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to see the gifts and blessings in our own lives. And oh God, this is the season for miracles, for witnessing your love in unexpected ways. We pray you work through our world and through each one of us so that where there is sorrow, your grace and comfort will surround. Where there is despair, your hope will light the darkness. Where there is hatred, your forgiveness will be also. Where there is war, your love will bring peace. Where there is confusion, your light would shine the way. Where there is fear, your joy will be a calming light. May the light that shines brightly this Christmas Eve continue to grow, to transform, and bring new life. And we pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who was born this night and taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That will be done. The Lord is Give us this day, and us to sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
This is a magical night. God with us has come to touch our world, our lives. God with us has come to bring us out of darkness into glorious light. God with us invites us now to come to the table, believing in the promises of God fulfilled tonight. Here we hear the angels and see the shepherds and are transformed by a baby. Here love is offered and love is found. In the sharing of bread and cup, here we find our journeys and, and its beginning. Let us pray the prayer of confession together. Merciful God, we confess that we often find darkness more comfortable than light. We confess that the Christmas has become more about busyness, gifts, decorations, and parties than it is about the birth of the Christ child. Forgive us, break us, bend us, remake us. Give us the courage to lay ourselves open to the wonder and healing of your coming. Be born again into the world. Be born again in the Amen. The true light that enlightens all has come and shines in our world, shines through the darkness. And the darkness has never been able to put it out. This is the good news. God has heard our prayer. God has forgiven us. Thanks be to God. We remember on that night so long ago, Jesus sat around the table with 12 of his closest friends, his disciples, and they shared a simple meal together. And during the meal, Jesus took bread, gave God thanks, blessed the bread and broke it, and shared it with his friends, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, when the meal was almost over, Jesus took the cup. Again, gave God thanks, left the cup, and shared it with his friends, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of this, remember me. Eternal God, for long generations, you prepared a way in our world for the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, you are still bringing the light of the gospel to darkened lives. Loving God, we thank you for coming to us in Christ Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, this bread and this fruit of the vine, and what we do here so that in this meal we may be transformed and made new by the power of your love through a babe named Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. All is now ready. If you did not receive a single served communion, could you raise your hand and we'll make sure you have one? Body of Christ, broken for you. Thank you. The cup of blessing poured out for you. Take and drink.
Let us pray. Holy One, we are filled with joy, for we have heard good news of great joy. We are filled with love, for we have tasted the sign of God's great love. We are filled with hope, for the angels still sing in our world, and there is a light for us to follow. Amen. We will now continue our time of worship by offering our gifts to God, gifts that can be used to bring peace, love, hope, and joy into our community and beyond. Gracious and loving God, there are so many things for us to be thankful about this night. Most of all, we are thankful that you came to us through a child, through a babe. We dedicate these offerings that we give back to you so that Christ's light might shine in our worship, that peace, love, hope, and joy might surround people everywhere. We dedicate these offerings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In a moment, we will begin our candle lighting and singing of Silent Night. Remember, one candle is but a flicker, but together, we can create a bright flame of Christ's light in the world. Consider the beauty of our lights shining together, both near and far. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the hope of all our tomorrows. 
May we be witnesses of the light Christ brings. Amen. Just a reminder, when the light comes to you, tilt your candle to the lit candle and keep your lit candle straight.
Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I tried to go long. <laughs> <I appreciate it. laughs>
Thank mm-hmm. you.